Hello YouTube, thought it was about time I did another video today, um, didn't do one last week so uh, anyway to make up for that I'm doing a double one this week which is a little review of this game here from Monument Games and it is two games in here uh, which is Death Pit and Doom Pit. The original, um, the original game Death Pit which was by Clive Townsend was supposed to have released, well it says it on the thing there somewhere, uh, there we are, after more than 30 years a great treasure is finally yours. And the reason for that is it was um, it was advertised in a lot of magazines back in the day, um, sort of your Sinclair and Crash. I remember seeing images of it and thinking it looked really cool, but it never released. I don't know why. I don't think it got finished. Um, so yeah, it would have been a Darrell Software game, obviously, being Clive Townsend. So it's developed here in Taunton. And something I just noticed about it, actually. I bought this a little while back, and I've always had it on display that way around. But this is quite cool. It's because it's two double cassettes, and yeah, if you display it that way around. Looks like um, the sort of two separate cassette images, which is quite a nice little touch. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'll let you have a little look at the contents, what comes in here, and then I'm going to load one of them into the the good old plus two, and I'll load the other one into the cassette player of the next. So then I can just pause it in between and show you both games. So first of all, I'm going to play Death Pitch, which is obviously the original one by Clive Townsend. There we go. So my understanding is this is unfinished. To, um, it's an unfinished game still, but you know it's, it's finally being released. So I have played a little bit of both of these, not too much. Um, so yeah, I was going to play them and I thought, well, let's do a video while I'm up here. So yeah, there's that. Quite nice artwork on there with the sort of bat, which are down in the tunnels. I'll, I'll pause it. Oh, I'll hold the uh, thing there a minute. So if you did want to read that, you can pause it. So there's that. And it's nice the sort of attention to detail they go to with these monument games. I haven't owned any of these monument games before this one. But yeah, you get the sort of various little things inside. There's a little badge there. If that focuses in. Uh, the image off the, off the front cover. I'm never too bothered about these little extras. I'm never going to use them. I, I always like to have a poster personally. Because that I will put up in a room if, um, if I've got a space for it. So you get that little card there. Yeah, what's that? Card number 21. Uh, so, and then you get this little CD, I guess that's, what's that, window CD-ROM? Yeah, another little card there on the back. So we certainly go all out on sort of putting the things in here. And there is our cassette for Death Pit. So I'll be popping that in in a second. And then you get this nice little manual here as well. So uh, yeah, really nice attention to detail on these. Far more than what you would have originally had. It's got the keys there. I can't remember if... Um, if you can use a joystick in this or not. Like I say, I have played it briefly before when I first picked it up. Uh, so yeah, so there's that one. And then I'll just pop that back in and I'll give you a quick look at the other one. I'll just pause it while I just put those back in the box. All right, so that's all those put away, apart from the cassette, which will go into the old um, Spectrum Plus 2. So that needs rewinding, actually. So I'll get that ready to go. And let's have a little look inside Doom Pit as well. So yeah, this one is by Alessandro... Grusa, I've probably murdered that name, but um, this is basically a sort of um, a reimagining of the game, a sort of modern take on it. Which again, I've played a bit of this one as well. It's really cool actually. So there's the back of that one. So yeah, it's nicer graphics and kind of better gameplay and everything. So really nice to have this as a sort of double set. I've never seen these before. These um, sort of double double cassettes. So yeah, inside that one, I've got similar sort of contents again. A uh, little card there with that number on the back. So I, I guess all these monument games must have different number cards to collect. And a little badge there. Don't know how well this is focusing in. Probably not very. Uh, what else we got? Obviously our cassette. Slightly different uh, artwork on that one to the other one. And CD-ROM again. Windows for a Windows PC. I never play any of these games on Windows, but it's nice to have the option. And another little, nice little instruction manual. So yeah, really nicely done these. It's quite impressive. It'd be nice if all um, homebrew games came with this, this type of um, attention to detail. You might be able to pause these if you want, do want to read them. I probably didn't leave the other booklet up long enough, I doubt, but, but yeah, so there we are. So I'm just gonna pause it. I'll get these cassettes loaded up. So this one will go in my little cassette player here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load both those at the same time. I'll show you first of all Death Pit, and then I'll give you a look at Doom Pit as well. So yeah, let me just pause that while I load those. 
Just done pausing out briefly just to show you the low screen of Doom Pit because I think that's a really nice one there. And, uh, and also I'll just quickly show you, again you can pause it, the uh, description of each game. So the Doom Pit is actually a sequel rather than a, a reimagining of the first one, but obviously the gameplay is quite similar. So anyway, I'll pause it again. Um, the first one's already loaded up so I'll be jumping in there in a second. Okay, so here we are with Death Pit by Clive Townsend. So I've just redefined the keys already to the joystick, so I've got a, um, the bug joystick, which is a Sinclair slot. So let's hopefully see if that works. Uh, so how do we start? Uh, keys of your choice. Make a space bar. Enter. Uh, press any key to start. Right. Oh. <laughs> Maybe this isn't going to work with a joystick. I'll just pause it a second until I can just suss this out. Okay, seemed like what I had to do there was uh, select keyboard as soon as I'd redefine keys for the joystick. So anyway, here we are. So we're up that bit and that's our little guy there. I'll just fix the focus in if I can. And out of interest, guys, I do tend to, um, I do most of my videos on a square aspect ratio just because of my phone. It's a, you know how it's tightened, so it's got square screen. But this time I've got it on widescreen and just you probably can't see any difference because of the um, the size of the screen but if you've got any preference do let me know if um, in general you prefer the widescreen ones or or the sort of square aspect ratio I don't know if it makes it a bit funny for people to uh, to watch now uh, I think actually I've missed something here because you pick up a spade uh, and that's what you can kill the snake snap with so I think normally you come here oh, there we are so you can Pick up that spade, have I got it? Ah, right, there we go. So you, you've got the spade, but that means you can't carry much, but you can kill the um, the snakes and things. I think that normally happens automatically. Uh, nothing's happening there. I thought that was the case, but anyway, we'll move on. So yeah, it's quite a nice little game, actually. I quite like the sprite there. Um, something I will be showing at some point, just because this guy here, really, I think he's like an early version of a spider, but he really reminds me of a game on a TI-99 called Hunt the Wumpus. The, uh, the, the Wumpus himself looks a lot like him, so that's quite cool for me to see. So these underwater bits, you've got the little oxygen level there, so you can't stay underwater for long, but you do sort of move in the same, in the same way. You can replenish your oxygen. You know, you find little oxygen tanks and stuff. So if you can hear a little whirring away in the background, that's because the um, Doom Pit is still loading in the background. So with the spade, you can get rid of these rocks. So yeah, you just push into them, basically. Let's put the volume a bit higher. But yeah, nice, nice looking little game. I think it plays quite well. I don't know why it wasn't ever finished. Oh, there you go. So yeah, you just push into them and you, you'll kill them. I don't think you can allow bats to hit you in the head. There you go. So if I didn't have the spade, you can carry more treasures. Um, but then you, you obviously you've got no weapons, so that's a sort of trade-off. So I think the basic idea is you sort of clear your way first with the spade, and then you'll come back down without the spade to get the treasures, or at least that's how I think it works anyway. Yeah, quite a cool little, what's that, that's like a little, um, is it amoebas? Yeah, amoebas. Ghosties there. So it's quite an interesting little game. I think this would have sold really, really well. Ah, so there's a uh, gold bar. I don't know if I can kill this fish yes you can uh, and yeah I picked up the gold bar it won't let me carry much of this when it, when you've got the shovel because that does count for some of your weight so the idea is you collect treasures and then you go back up to the surface and, um, and put it in your in the back of your truck basically that's the other one loaded so I won't show too much of this because I'm gonna want to show the other one as well that is our route there so i might have gone a wrong way uh let's just see if i can pick up out of the gold bar over there oh news news flash <laughs> i didn't notice this before i'll just have a little bit of beer while we watch this hmm. news flash it has it has just been confirmed because it's slow to read isn't it by experts Today.
<laughs> that's quite a random <laughs> that is quite a random news flash anyway let's uh, see if we can pick up this gold ah yeah you see so i can't pick it up but if i didn't have my shovel with me i think you can leave your drop your shovel uh so oh yeah so look i could uh i could drop my shovel there then i can carry more gold but obviously i've got to come back for my shovel so it's quite an interesting little game there's a lot to it yes like it was sort of spelunka game i suppose would be the what they call these type of things now but very early one i mean this was this i guess this should have released something like um 1986 or seven or something like that but it'd be interesting to know why it was the game was abandoned i have no idea on that one annoyingly i did go into the i've mentioned to people before i did go into the Jurel software um place and I, I spoke to the owner in there and uh I wish I thought about it. I could have asked him, you know, what happened with this game, why, why it didn't ever get released. But anyway, I'll finish it there. Um, I'm going to pause it and then, well, in fact, I don't even need to pause it, I don't think. Let's change the input over to HDMI. And there we are, look, we've got Doom Pit already loaded in. So let's turn that speaker up. I can't remember how you select these now. It's a really kind of quirky method. Um, ah, space bar, so yeah, we want joystick, uh, which one's which show? Uh, one's Kempston, we? I'm guessing it's that one maybe. Well, let's hope for the best. Oh shit, it isn't that one. Oh, hang on, I'm, st I'm still using, uh, still plugged into the Spectrum. So let's grab the little 8-bit dough. Nothing's happening there. Ah, oh, you know what? I should have selected Kempston on this. Uh, right, I know what we'll do. Joysticks. Ah, so I'll try putting it on Sinclair 1, I think. I think that's the one I'd selected. Ah, there we go. Right. So here we go. So same thing. You pick up your, your little shovel here. Uh, I got it. I think I've got the shovel by default. And these little flashing guys, you can't kill those. Um, oh, I walked into a dead end. So you got to go around them. I don't know what's happened with the sound. I think normally there's music in this. settings but yeah as you can see it's a lot nicer graphics obviously being a much more modern game with new techniques and things but the principles are the same you go around collecting your stuff and uh, and taking them back up to the surface and it's all the same sort of oh, oh shit <laughs> it's the same mechanics where um you know you can't carry as much stuff when you you've got your spade but yeah very cool game i had spent quite a bit of money when i when i bought this so i was actually thinking i might I might not keep it, but yeah, as soon as I played it, I thought, no, that's going to have to stay. So they've got a bit of treasure there. Pretty sure there should be music in this. Oh, yeah, so you, you can kill the little guys, but you've got to basically be facing them. You can't just... Uh, walk down or up into the enemies, that's how it works. See this video is on 14 minutes already, so I won't take it much longer, but I'll just show you a little bit further into the game. And on this one, you'd have to press the fire button to, uh, to activate the shovel. You can't just walk into them like the other one. Right, so they respawn. Ah, so it seems like when you die, you, you drop your items where you died, which is quite a neat little touch. Let's go over there. And carry 
don't know. I don't know how you can work out what weight you can carry. I guess that's just a sort of trial and error thing that you learn over time. But it's the same principle as the um, death bit, where you can carry more if you drop a shovel. But obviously, um, I don't know how that would work actually, because it, with the enemies respawning like that, I don't know how you can get back through. And again, you've got your sort of oxygen level there ticking down when you're underwater, so you can only do that for so long. And there's a dragon. Yeah, that's this is a cool bit, which is quite nice to see. So I'll go down there. You do have a dragon in the first one as well. That's the thing I remember seeing in the screenshots of the game I was really sort of looking forward to. So we we'll definitely go and see a dragon before we, um, before we finish up. So yeah, there he is. He's quite a cool dragon actually. He's a nice, he's sort of more animated dragon than in the first one. Shame on. Oh, oh shit, I died. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so, so yeah, there we are. At least I got to show you the dragon anyway. Um, I'll probably finish up the video there because it's 16 minutes already. But that was a little sort of mini review of both Death Pit and Doom Pit. Um, it's a shame you can't get hold of these uh, monument games any anymore, is, is my understanding of it anyway. Um, I, th I don't know what happened to monument games, but the, the game's quite sought after. There was quite a lot of these games for sale on Sinclair for sale at one point. There just seemed to be about sort of three people clearing them out. And I got this just because um, yeah, it's one I always was was curious about when I used to see Death Pit advertised on the old um, on the old Sinclair magazines. So uh, yeah, I'll finish up there. Oh, and just before I go, uh, I just want to say a big thanks to everybody that watches my videos, and especially those that sort of give thumbs up and leave comments and everything. Really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, I've got a nice little sort of community of people that that pop into the channel these days. So uh, I just wanted to say a thanks to to those folk. Um, yeah, you all, all know who you are. So uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you another time. And that is all.